pull it maybe just a little bit closer. Like that. Towards you? Yeah. Cool. Try to get as close as you can. Like that. I don't yeah. want to be making yeah, it like off the mic. Yeah, like a touch Like a touch <laughs> Like a touch <touch-age. laughs> Not inside. I haven't taken one this big to the <laughs> face before. <laughs> Fuck, we haven't even started yet and it's already getting the R18 content. Holy shit. All right, all right. Let's kick it off, eh? <laughs> okay, let's go. <coughs> Jeff Arno, welcome back to the Jabez Makawi experience. Today I have um, Elisa Wilson with me, local Napier girl, a friend of mine. Um, she's really, She's got a really cool story. Um, one that, um, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover, you know. You're, like you're, you're like a really pretty, beautiful girl and people might have a... Certain, um, what's what's the word? You know, when they like There's when that they perception. see you, your yeah, perception, yeah, perception of you um, when they meet you. But when they meet you, what they don't know you, you know. 100%. But you're like you're like a totally um, different person on two hands. Yeah. You know, you're like real outgoing. Yeah. Um, real loud, but then oh, on the other yeah. on the other side, like. You talk a lot about mental health and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I'm excited to have you on today. Thank you. How's it going? Oh, it's good. It's um, When you're saying that, I'm very much like the introverted extrovert, mm. you know? And, and I play that to my advantage sometimes, having two sides to my personality, because sometimes it helps, you know, yep. when everything's split down the middle. Yeah, Makes I think the first time I met you, we were on the piss um, Oh, Jesus. At Henry and Trent's place. Oh, was this? Oh. Shout out to 15 Ryan. Oh. <laughs> I don't even want to know what and I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a few videos around floating oh, around somewhere. Oh shit! Um, and so yeah, like you, you're like real. Uh, my first impression was like you're right, real, real outgoing. Yeah, right. Um, but after getting to know you, you also got another side to you. Yep. Yeah, two very different sides, eh? And you're pretty outgoing on TikTok too. <laughs> Should talk about that on yeah, TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> What's your experience been so far with TikTok? Bro, do you know what? I got I think I got TikTok like two and a half years ago and mm-hmm. I started posting on it consistently consistently and there was that stigma back then of oh TikToks for thirteen year olds. Like you don't even need to be playing around on that. So yet. you were doing dances back then, eh? Oh yeah, dances and like pulling gang signs and doing mm-hmm. all this crazy shit. <laughs> and I was like, nah. They were getting views and then yep. I was like, nah, the stigma of it got to me. I was like, nah. What am I doing? Yeah, it wasn't cool back then. Nah, it wasn't cool. And it's kind of whack if you're on there. Yeah, yeah, totally. That, that was whack. my that was my impression of it when I first um, heard about it too. I was like, yeah. man, this is for that's just for kids, you know. And like, and then I got on there and fucking exploded, and you know, got a lot of business from it. So, um, yeah, shout out to TikTok. Yeah, shout out to TikTok. How long did it take for you to consistently post to start taking off? Um. Not long, not long to be honest. Yeah. Like as soon as I did start posting, because I took off, but you know, I pulled back a bit lately, just due to some personal things. But um, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a cool app. Um, you've been pretty um, posting a lot of you know <laughs> funny stuff lately. Shock value, shock value, shock value. I've I've discovered that my niche are people that like sick, crazy things. Yep. <laughs> New Zealanders have that sick sense of humour. There's so one I, video that stood out to me. <laughs> What's that? <coughs> I I, th- I think it might be better if um comes from here, but it was the one where you were where you were like test- testing for COVID. Oh. <laughs> the uh, the old fat pussy. The old fat pussy. <laughs> <laughs> out, of it, out of it. Yeah, did the old um fuck? I can't even remember how. Yeah, said I tested positive for COVID. Oh no, nah, wait, this is the test to see if you have a fat pussy, and just left it at that. And I checked it the next morning, and fuck the comments. It blew up, eh? It blew, <laughs> it blew up. Checked my DMs on Instagram. All these requests, like, "Hey, can I see your fat pussy?" Like, <laughs> what's that? What's that like as a female? Like, um, you know, because my my DMs don't look like that. Like, but I imagine good. as as a, as a good looking woman, like, it's like it's like that. Like, the, you have got dudes like shooting their shot. Like, they see a video like that, and they think. I'm gonna hit her up. Like, what? Like, you know? Yeah, yeah. In the in the worst way. Like, you couldn't even say hi beforehand. <laughs> you just went straight in to be like, "You have a fat pussy?" Question mark. He's he's fucking. Side. Yeah, shout out to he's fucking side because that was that was crack up. You um, posted a screenshot of um, one of the um, dudes that stood in your DM and was like, "What did he say? Can I have you, you a fat pussy?" You have a you have a fat pussy? Question mark. <laughs> and like, um, 
His name was East fucking side. East fucking side. 14 years old. My man, <laughs> shout out to East fucking side. I didn't figure out he was 14 until eight hours later when I went back and clicked into his profile and it said 14 years old. And I was like, holy shit. But what that, what's that like, bro? Because you're putting yourself out there and you know, like, you're doing it, to, you're doing it for a laugh. Like, I know, yeah. I know you as a person and you're, you're like that, bro. When, when it's like, when we're at a party or whatever, like, that's the person you are. Yeah. Um, but to people on TikTok, they don't know, they're just scrolling through and then they just see the chicks like, I've got a fat pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you're like, no, oh, well, I'm going to shoot you know, my and then shot got, then. And then you get like a whole lot of dudes in your dance. What's, what's that What's that like, bro? Yeah, it's – because I have a husband and I don't I, – like I keep him out of my social media because he doesn't really like it. He's not that kind of person. So I can see how people sometimes think, oh, you know, like she's this pretty young female who is, you know, potentially single, I'm going to shoot my shot. Sometimes, depending on how I'm feeling mentally, because I have those two states of mind, yep. if I'm feeling creative and energetic, I'm like, hell yeah, like I'll ride this out, have a laugh with it, give them shit back. If I wake up and I've had a really bad day or if I'm not feeling all goods mentally, it can be the worst thing. Yeah, because the haters on the haters on TikTok, like they're fucking pretty savage, eh? and there's like so Bro. there's so many of them. Yep. It's, yep. Um, it can, can be quite... Um, it can freak, freak you a little bit when you first experience it, eh? Yeah, 100%. And if I was, you know, the fact that young kids can go on and, and do dances and put it out to the world and face, get faced with all of that hate, it's like, how do you overcome that, you know? Yeah. If there's no, no one checking up on you. There's nobody overseeing it, you know? You can have the parental controls and guidelines, but kids and teenagers know how to push the boundaries, right? They're going to put whatever they want up on yep, there. for sure. And it, yeah, it, I get I get how it can become a real dangerous place. I also get how it can be fantastic for exposure. Yeah, if definitely. You, if you're doing the right things and hitting the right. You know, markets. For, my, for my for my business, it's, it's been crazy. Like the um, amount of business I've gotten from, um, yep. or even opportunities, you know, from have, having that so so much exposure. Yep. Um, but you, you have the haters. Shout out to the haters because um, they just, hate us because they ain't you're us. You're just making you're just making our content go more to so be seen by more people that. Maybe our, our ideal audience. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're um, the reason I got you on here because you're about to start a podcast yourself. Yeah. Exciting times, eh? Exciting. I'm trying to figure out a name. Yep. We got a fit. fat pussy. <laughs> My fat pussy. <laughs> we had this conversation before we started talking about the fat pussy podcast. <laughs> I think I get fired from work. So if you guys, um, you guys just do have any name suggestions, you know, post put them in put them in the comments. Yeah, please. I need them. Potentially, if they've got pussy involved, we can talk. But what's the whole idea and co power behind the wanting to have a podcast? What are you going to talk about? Yeah, so my the original idea was me for me to call it Project V because mm. I wanted to have vulnerable conversations and vicious yarns. Nice and a mix of both because, like we've said, I'm very much two different personalities. I'm a Gemini yep. too, so you know, sign of a twin. Um, and I I didn't know how to encompass all of that. And, and almost for it to be acceptable to talk about mental health and then to talk about crazy things that we do on the piss. It's like, how do the two match? And I'm like, well, no one that I know is really talking about that. Yep. And if people can relate to me, very much going through this journey still, because I'm not perfect, I'm still just figuring my shit out. And, and I want to talk about it and I want to talk to for people sure. who also are going through their own shit. Yep. I don't want to be someone who jumps on and be like, hey... I'm cured. This is what yeah, works for me. Hard. Go away and because honestly, hard. some people are just full of shit. They come yeah. on these, things, you know. Yeah. And so, if I can, if I can encompass that and do that, and and if it takes off, then sweet as. And if it doesn't, then it's it's still me proving to myself that I can commit to actually doing something because I've been thinking about doing this for for years. Yeah. Um, and it's always my mindset that sets me back. And you, and you, you can help a lot of people. Um, we're going to get into your story, but like, you, you're going to help a lot of people, like. Even if it's one, two people, or hundreds, thousands, um, yeah. you're still helping someone, you know? Exactly. If you can help help one person, or just, you know, like, even if this conversation resonates with somebody, then job done. Yeah. And that's just us being ourselves. So just to wind it all back, um, what was your upbringing like? Yeah, my upbringing, I can't knock it. It was, it was really, really good. I had a very loving family. Um, raised traditional Italian Catholic, so those... Church every Sunday was there. My dad was a cop. Good food. Good food. Damn. Oh, the pasta, the pizza, every right. like traditional everything that you see in the movies about what Italian feasts are. It's that. 
every Sunday, like huge lunches. Damn. Yeah, and I was the entertainer. Like from a young age, just always come be like put on shows for people. So you learned you learned that um, early on. Oh, you know that side yeah. of yourself. Yeah, I think I was born nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, like there are. My dad was recently transferring old family vo- videos onto DVD, yep. and he would send me the footage of me like head banging to ACDC as like a three year old kid. Nice, uh, yeah, just real out of it, out of it shit. But I loved it. I love making people laugh or getting like reactions out of people, and it's yeah, it just brings me joy. So from a young age, caught up in doing that until like teenage years hit. Yep. And they come, I mean, teenagers are a fucking roller coaster anyway, aren't they? Yeah, and for sure. Growing up in Wellington, I was at like an all girls Catholic school, which probably didn't do any favours either. Yep. Um, and back then, you know, we, we didn't have TikTok or social media, but we had magazines where, you know, they'd put pictures of Britney Spears and plaster mm. about how fat she was or. Yeah, and the skinny was in back then, eh? Oh, so skinny. Yeah. Yeah. And like Paris Hilton and shit, bro. Like, yeah. remember when that was like the ideal? Yeah, and you had like those pro anorexia sites mm. that were just—it was normal, like Tumblr and all that, just promoting eating disorder culture. Yeah, and I became real consumed in that because I was always, really? a, yeah, I was always a bigger kid. Yeah, um, and never really clicked that I was bigger until maybe like year eight. So what would that have been like? Twelve. Well, what was the experience that like made you? Like, think, fuck, I'm bigger than everyone else. Or yeah, it was, oh, fuck. The one thing that stands out to mind is when I, I had my first high school boyfriend. Yep. Um, and I, I don't know, I, when I'm in relationships, I just, like, fall hard straight away. So I was yep. infatuated with him. And I went and met up with him and his friends. And one of his friends made a comment about, oh, is that Elisa over there? And, like, hinted to this big-ass lady in the corner eating a whole bunch of food. And I was just yep. like... Bro, oh, kids are ruthless, eh? Bro, I was just like, you know, I had to put the face on, like, oh, ha, 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 like, uh, pretend I'm not going to hear that. And that just stuck with me. Probably so something so in- insignificant, the guy probably doesn't even remember saying it. Yep. But that was the trigger for me because of things that, you know, like growing up being the bigger kid, occasionally, and parents don't mean it, and family sometimes don't mean it, but in yep. Italian culture, it's always like, oh, you know, like, have some more, yeah. Bro, my nan was the same. Like, yeah. If I, and she'll get offended if I didn't eat everything on my plate, you know. Yeah. Like, it's um, an insult. And then try and feed me more, you know. Like, so. Yeah, yeah. So there was that. There's always that going on. Um, and so I was like, well, fuck, I can't, I can't really restrict anything. So I became very introverted, mm. um, became super obsessed with going to the gym. And then for me, if I'm seeing results with something – so this is when you were a teenager? Yeah, yeah, probably like, when did this start, 13, 14? Yeah, Damn. started yeah, obsessively going to the gym, and then with that came secretly restricting food. Yep. So, so like what kind of things were you doing? So like mum would make lunches in the morning, and fuck, I feel so ratchet saying this, because it's very entitled, you know, like yep. the, being so privileged to have someone making you lunches, and I'm going and throwing them out or giving them away to other people yep. just to try and hide the fact that I'm, I don't want to eat. Yep. Because I want my boyfriend to like me. Because I want to feel yeah. accepted. Yeah, so all of that's going on. And yep. I'm just internalising it. Because I don't want to talk to anybody about it. Because it's, it's embarrassing, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So all of that. Uh, and then w- well, along with that, obviously, I started losing weight. So people started noticing. And my parents got quite concerned. Yep. And then would sit me down and make me. And then I would go and make myself throw up. So so that whole thing lasted. Prob- like on and off, probably like... Oh, Seven, eight years? Yeah. Crazy. A long time. Uh, yeah. And just, um, I don't know. How, I, how, like, did it, how did it feel? Like, when, when you were doing it, like, were you, how was it making you feel inside, like, um, like, doing it? Was it making you feel good? Was it making you feel not good? Was it? It, was, it was making me feel good really superficially. Yeah. Um, the way you looked in the mirror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything was hung up on the way that I looked. And the way that I looked was associated with the way that I felt. So if I didn't feel good, um, if I didn't look good, then, then there was no way in hell that I would feel good. And were you getting, like, positive validation from other people? Like, because you maybe lost a little bit of weight? Yeah, or? yep. And it came thick and fast. You know, as soon yep. as people realise, it's like, wow, what are you doing? You look so great. So that fuels that motivation even mm. more to be like, okay, well, I'm not going to... Tell them that. Yeah, hell no, I'm just going to keep restricting and... 
Keep being very manipulative. Yep. Eating disorders come with very manipulative tendencies. In, so. like, in like what ways? So I could get my way, especially with my parents, like convince them that everything was totally okay. Yeah. Um, and, and they would pick up on cues. Obviously, they figured out that I was making myself sick. So we'd yep. try and not, not let me leave the table for like an hour after eating. Yep. But I'd figure out ways to do it anyway. Yep. Um, you know, just you've got to become really crafty. I yep. kind of, like I don't want to compare it to having a drug addiction because it's very different, yep. but it's those same kind of cravings. I feel, I feel like all addiction is the same. Eh? Yeah, those underlying cravings and urges and, and tactics that you use to try and get your way. Yep. Because, um, you know, when it's all you can think about, because it is, it becomes so consuming. Um, yeah, it, it's awful. They're awful things. And it's, it's buzzy how so many females have experienced it or have some kind of... If you could, um, if you could talk to that little girl, yeah. what would you say? Fuck, I'd just give her a hug. Yeah. Yeah, because it's rough. Yeah. And, and back then, I think the biggest thing I could have done was ask for help. But there was such a stigma around asking for help. How do you even ask for help? Exactly. You're a teenager, like yep. It, yep. It, you know, you, it's hard to ask for help, and it was for me when I was a teenager. So yep. And, and another thing, you know, at that age, people almost find it comical because kids yep. are always looking for something to talk about. Yeah, so to if mock you, you or yeah, whatever, yeah, if you talk about, you know, openly then you become struggling. that girl. You become yeah. that girl, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did. I became that girl because I was mm. forced into seeing like the school counselor. Yep. And every class, the counsellor would send you um, like little appointment cards and yep. the teacher would hand it out to you in front of the front class. Of in front of everyone. In front of everyone. And everyone knew this little white folded up slip and every day they would come in and be like, oh, Elisa Morrison, because it was my name back then, give me the slip and everyone looks at you like, oh, fuck, what's her problem? Yeah. What's I just want to say quickly to all you young kids out there, like um, I'm going through counselling and um, freaking therapy at the moment. So like, you know, I'm cool. So it's cool. It, um, it's I'm cool. Just letting you guys know. Therapy um, is fucking cool. Don't let don't let those little fucking holes at school um, make you feel a certain type of way, because when you become an adult, you're going to need it. You feel me? Hundred percent. If that yeah, if I could give any advice to anybody, is just talk about shit that you're going through. Because mm. the longer you leave it bottled up, the harder it is. To get to your mid twenties and be like, oh fuck, I've got all this baggage to unpack. So, Dan, bro, when was that point? Like when you started unpacking it? Fuck. I, so I think the the trigger for me is I got a really really cool job in radio doing like yep. this kind of stuff, doing voiceovers, and I was absolutely loving it. I thought I had scored my dream job. Damn! I told you you need to do ASMR. <laughs> I told you you got that. If you got that radio, you know you already got uh, that experience. Uh, do you want to come to a job at McCoy Studio? Get some fireish clippers. <laughs> At least it's got a fat pussy. Yeah, got a, got a fat Mick energy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, you're going to give me a coughing, but I'm still recovering from COVID. That's, my brain's gone all funny. Oh, God. Wait, what were we talking yeah, about? Yeah, so um, wh- like when, when did you start to come out of, out of that place, bro? And like how, how, did oh. it, how, did you, how did you do it? Yeah, so, so okay, working in radio kind of – and I fucked that up for myself because – over the weekends would be, I got into a really bad cycle of like binge eating. Mm. So I'd restrict through the week and then Friday night came, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, binge out and then wake up on Monday and you know that whole start fresh Monday mentality? Yep. And I would convince myself that I was just like the ugliest, most disgusting thing. Damn. Because, yeah, because of all of my destructive behaviours over the weekend so it became a cycle. Yep. So Monday would restrict hard out and, and it would get to the point where I would be calling in sick for work because I would just mentally feel so drained and so anxious and having panic attacks and all of that. So it got to a point where I was just like, okay, I need to do something about it. I quit my job and I went over to Thailand for six months. Just nice, six months. Nice. Yeah, in Phuket. Nice. Um, like we're Tiger Muay Thai and all of them. I yep. know because you've been over there as well. So I was hanging out over there and just just chilling. Yeah. Yeah, had... Uh, and I loved my friends that I had back in Wellington because I've got the best memories with them. But sometimes it's really good just to separate yourself yep. and figure out what it is that you stand for and what it is that you want to do um, because like, I have a very addictive personality yep. and I'm always, always getting FOMO over things and I'm still dealing with that now, yep. just learning to kind of distance myself. Always forever dealing with the pro. Right. Like how do you, just, how do you come o- overcome that? Yep. It's, it's hectic. So I spent, yeah, a little bit of time over there just kind of connecting with who I was and figuring yep. out 
okay, for me, over there was when I figured out I've got issues mm. that I need to sort out. It, probably a few. Okay. Thailand was quite healing for me too, yeah, bro. Yeah, it is. There's something about the, the culture yeah. over there. Like, you can't yeah. describe it, eh? Yeah, they all got nothing in, and they're happy, bro. Yep. Happy you know. with simple things. Simple things. The simple life. Yep. Yep. And nothing's ever too much. Like very, very generous people. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to stay there. Yeah. But if, how old would I have been? 20, 21 at the time? Yeah, I was like, okay, I need to come back. Um, materialistic things were taking precedence back then as yep. a 21-year-old. Came back here, came to visit my grandparents. I think I had just turned 22. Was swiping on Tinder up here and then met Ellery. Nice. So, and then from then I kind of just hung so you, around. Wait, you, you guys met on Tinder? Yeah. Damn. Buzzy, like, eh? That's pretty, like, you guys got a successful relationship. How long you guys been together? You're married? Like, like, yeah, married for four years. Together for since like seven. From, 20, from yeah, Tinder. 20 so Tinder does work. For, for that, you know. Yeah. I thought it was just for hookups. I, it was just going to be a hookup. Yeah. <laughs> and then it just turned into something more. Nice. So I was like, oh. So well, you still had, you were still working through this when you, like with the eating disorder when you... Um, when you met Ellery? Or? Yeah, I I had come to terms, and it was even that a, word sound like calling it a disorder, eh, but it's like yeah. Well, I guess it must do something to you as well. Like. It kind of is like it's it's a disease. Really, some people class as that because yep. you know it becomes so consuming. Yeah. Um, and there's so many different types of categories that eating disorders can fall into. Like you can have body dysmorphia disorder, mm. where you're not necessarily restricting or or binging or purging, but you're caught up on how your body looks or your body looks different mm. to what it actually looks like. Yep. And that's a whole other issue in itself. So I yep. think when I moved here, I definitely had that going on. Yep. I had the um, like the binging and all of that um, and, and the purging all under control, but yep. still all the stuff inside. I was mm. like, okay, I've, there are issues, but I still need to unpack them. And I was yep. like, where the fuck do you even start? How do yep. you do that? Um, so things kind of fell into place and I ended up working out at the prison – Yep. Um, which in a married weird, to the mob. Uh, married to the mob, and do you know what? In a it's weird a full time job. <laughs> it's a full time job. Met, it's strange because I really enjoyed it. Yep. It was. It's the buzziest thing. And as long as you're, I don't want to say as long as you're respectful because sometimes shit pops off. But yep. as long as there's those underlying elements of respect, generally things are not too bad. I mean, you were just talking about the prison, bro, when we, when we left off. Oh, yeah. That, interesting times, because I'm still working for corrections, but mm. um, the journey to how I got into my current mahi is I was out of the prison and obviously you're doing night shifts and stuff, and there was still a lot of shit that I needed to work out for myself. Yep. And working in a prison helped me almost in a weird roundabout way realise that I have so much stuff shit to work on because mm. um, you see people with trauma every single day yep. you know people do bad things but when you're working in that environment you can almost see how it happens oh bro 100% once you learn this backstory eh? yeah yeah and you just it's always from trauma yeah always from trauma and you just find yourself resonating with people yeah you know where it's just like it only takes a, a series of a couple wrong decisions to change your entire life yeah um so I was like, okay, I need to start doing something about this. And all the counselling and therapy that I went to, it was all beneficial but in like little nuggets. So I needed to figure this shit out for myself. So I enrolled in like mental health programs and did some studies in psychology oh, nice. on my night shifts out at the prison just to try and unpack what was yep. going on for myself. To try and heal yourself, eh? Yeah. And it works. Damn. Yeah, the more that you figure out like the links between our thoughts and our feelings and our behaviours and like the core beliefs that we develop as yep. children and how that all just meshes together. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's almost like you're studying it but you're giving yourself therapy at the same time. Yep. Um, so after I did that, I got the opportunity to go work in the drug treatment unit in the prison. Yep. So doing therapy, three month or six months pro, uh, three month or six month programs with guys who have alcohol or drug related offending. Nice. Um, so you're doing the program and and guiding them through that program. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I don't want to bag anything, but I think. When you're working under a corrections environment for the government, mm. their main focus is safety and security. Yep. So there's a lot of protocols 
and a lot of black and white mm. and, and not much grey area to be yep. able to give therapy that guys really need. Yep. Um, you know, it, it can be really difficult for somebody who jail is all they've really known mm. to come in and sit there and listen to somebody who's been to university for four years to be like, yeah. you have to do this differently. It's yep. like, how can I relate to you? Yeah. Who are yep. you to come in and tell me how to change my life? You yep. know? Yep. So it takes a special kind of person to work in those environments. Yeah. Um, and it can be really draining too. Yeah. I bet, bro. Yeah. I, I, fuck. I, I actually I went out to the prison one time with um, Paletti and um, I was it was a weird feeling walking out. I was like, bro, I can just walk out of here. Yeah. You know? Strange, eh? Because I had met some dudes in there and I got to talk to them, you know, and, and I was like, fuck, they're just people. Yeah. I don't know what they've done. Um, but, and then we just walked out. And I was like, fuck. How did the feeling of, of walking out, of out leave you? Like you needed to shake something off? Yeah, bro. Yeah. It's like, or no, it was like, I can just walk out, but then there's these people that are like locked up in there. Yeah. Like, and I can just walk out. Yep. It's you strange know. out there at night times. Oh, I bet. I bet, bro. Oh, oh bro, do you want to hear some stories? Because yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they know who's wait, 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 on. What kind of stories are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> they, I'll tell you one story. Oh. When, I do, when I used to do night shifts, they all knew who was doing what shift. Yep. So one night I was in one of the units, the bed units, and they were, everyone was locked up, and it was like a wank chain. <laughs> <laughs> so every time you have to look in the in the windows to make sure they're still alive and breathing. Yeah. So you look in, cock in my face. Next one, cock in my face. Another one, he's, and I'm just like, give me a break. I can't lie, bro. If I, if I was in, if I was on there, I'd be doing the same thing, bro. I'd be like, oh shit, fucking fattest pussy in NZ's on tonight. <laughs> That's where East Side was. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Um. But yeah, no, nah, bro. Um, let's 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 because you know a, a lot of times when I've met you, he's been at parties, bro. Let's talk about you. Yeah. There's a party. There's a Lisa. <laughs> What's she doing? What's she up to? For those that don't might not know you. Ah, <laughs> oh, probably getting naked. Yep. Probably doing something inappropriate. Yep. Uh, uh, you loud. Know, <laughs> loud. Loud. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. Always hear you know that one person you can hear before you can see them. Yeah, it's me, and I and I don't do it. I don't want this to come across like I'm an attention seeker. because yep. it's not like that at all. I just if the vibe is there. But you, like you said it from at the start, like when, from when you were a kid, you were like the life of the party. So yeah, it's just like it's part of who you are. It's just you know like well, you don't have to, you don't have to um like explain like um like explain why you're the way because that's who you are. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but I feel like, you know, I still sometimes get caught up on that fear of judgment. You know, yeah. people will see me being or doing something real out the gate on someone's stories and be like, yeah. oh, who's that? You know, like, who's she trying to yeah, suss yeah, into? Yeah. Who does she think she is? Yeah. It's just me having a good time because yeah. other people enjoy it as well, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so yeah, you're the life of the party. Every party that I've been to, and you've been, you've been the life of oh it. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. I had to <laughs> <laughs> I had <to> it. <laughs> You actually he sent me a video like a, at the beginning of the week, eh, of us yeah. uh, pre drinks for LAB at Black Bar. Yeah, I'm going to post it right here. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> fire Rish was pussy and then Zara. See, we were going on about the Fire Rish pussy two years ago. <laughs> um, yeah, it just came to the bay making waves. <laughs> now, it's the fat, now it's the fat pussy. <laughs> Out of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. A life, of the, life of the party. But um, also in saying that, depending, because I go through, I call it like seasonal depression. So, like, yeah, like there was a thing, other thing, like, because, you know, I had met you that way, like through the party scene. And then um, and then you started posting um, videos on Instagram about your, um, like your, your, your journey with your mental health and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I was like, oh, wow, there's a lot more layers yeah. to this person. Yeah, yeah. And I'm still, that's the part that I'm still kind of figuring out. Yeah. Ultimately, to be able to help people with that aspect, like mm. their body image and their mental health, um, would just, you know, to be able to do that full time would be elite. But yep. I'm still, I can't sit here and be like, I've got it all figured out because I don't. No, none, none of us ever going to have it figured yeah. out. Um, so I'm just trying to, I know that I have some really high highs and I can have some really low lows. Um, mm, and it usually yeah. comes after summer, like, Bro, those I, winter yeah, months, yeah, same. I'm a bit lower in winter than yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it, again, it's the days are short, bro, and it's like there's not much sun. Yeah, like, it's cold. Yep, 
there's nothing to do around here. Yeah. Yep. And yep, it, that's true. And it doesn't take much like to set off a snowball effect. Mm. So if I spend a couple of weeks chilling at home, maybe eat, not really looking after myself physically, mentally, emotionally, all of those things, all of those little things like reflecting in the morning or doing affirmations, when those start to go out the window, I'm like, okay, something's off here. Yep. And very quickly that can spiral into, I don't want to go anywhere, I don't want to see anyone mm. because there's almost, when I'm in those low funks, I get in my head that there's this expectation that if I'm to go out, I have to be the life of the party. Yeah. And I know that I don't have to be that all the time, but it's yep. just figuring that out. Yep. Uh, it's hard. Yeah, I'm the same. I get, I get that way. Like, I don't want to um, be around people. Yeah. Or don't, you know, don't want to go to certain things. Um, and then you start, like, thinking inside, like, fuck, these people are going to stop liking me because I, I don't want you know, but it's... it's it's only because I don't. It's not because I don't like them, you know. It's a it's a me thing. Yeah. Yeah. How do you deal with that, or how do you even overcome that? I don't know, bro. I just got, I just I don't know. Still yeah. trying to, you know. Yeah. Even sometimes with, with, with like, my, like with my DMs, bro. Like. Yeah. So many people that I can't reply to, you know. Like so, it's like, um, and then I, I might see it, and I'm like, fuck. Yep. It's almost like an anxiety that creeps yeah. up. You know, you leave your phone for a couple of hours and then pick it back up, and you've got all these messages sitting there. It's like, fuck, do I feel Have you like got a I'm fat like pussy? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm responding to people with fat mix only. The rest of you can get fucked. <laughs> Out of it. Oh, do you know, the key takeaway from this is going to be oh, did you see that chick? You're going to be, 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 be the fat pussy chick, bro. <laughs> Oh, I don't. It's not like a yuck fat. What? Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. We're gonna, we're gonna stop that, right? <laughs> um, oh. Nah. Let's 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 switch it around, bro. Trolling your thugs. Um, oh, we didn't. We haven't even talked about this yeah, yet. Yeah, bro. Let's talk about that. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the dildo, bro. <laughs> what was that about? Where do we even start? Okay, so again, let's with start with how you got on the white list, bro. Let's okay. start with that. Yeah. So, like I said, obsessive personality right mm. if i saw this trillionaire thug thing pop up maybe three weeks before i even jumped in the discord yep. um i have been experimenting with crypto for maybe the last year so kind of had a bit of an idea of what nfts were and had bought yep. them off the floor before never been in a discord never minted anything yep. um i saw heaps of people like you jumping in yep. um heaps of people that i knew online jumping in i was like okay let's just go in and, and see what this is about and immediately got hooked Yep. I was like, okay, I, I need and to be on that white list. Yeah. yeah. Cause you need to get on that white list, eh, bro? Yeah. Hard. And I was like, okay, what can I do? Because people were doing raps. Um, yep. I think when I got in there, the white list was already at like 1,700. Yep. So there weren't many spots left. I was like, okay. I yeah, everyone was just going hard to get on that white list, anything, eh, bro? Though, anyone was doing anything. Bro, I fucking stayed up for like three days straight, bro, like hustling to get on there. Yep. I was talking to Ellery about this before I came in. He was like, it was just background noise. And I've never experienced something like that. Because we like, I, I was sitting back for so long. Like, and I was like, no, no, fuck it, I'm going to get on there. And once I put, um, put it out there that I was going to get on there, I started feeling like, if I don't get on there, like, then I'm going to look like a fucking dick, bro. Yeah. yeah. You know? And so I had to put, I put all of everything into it. And I was like, bro, this was actually, it was actually a bit fucked up, to be honest. Uh, like Mentally. I look back on it and I'm like, you were up for like three days straight bro. in that Discord. You're putting all of your other priorities to the side yep. just to crack this whitelist. Yeah, I bro, like, I did the problem. same thing. Wasn't bro. that healthy for the old mental health? Yeah, I would <laughs> fuck straight up, bro, because I was just like, I was just like, fuck, I'm trying to get on there, bro. You know, I, I had fuck, I had crazy amount of invites too, like way more than anyone yeah. else, and um, but it still wasn't on there. I was like, fuck, I need on there, you know? Yeah. So but let's talk about. Okay, so you had to do something to get noticed. Yeah, attention, bro. Like, caught attention at all yeah. costs. Any attention. So I was like, okay, well, what do I know how to do best? Just do like. Some out of it crude shit. Out of it funny shit, yeah, eh? Yeah, yeah. So I, <laughs> I, when, I when I saw the video you're about to talk about, bro, I, 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 I wasn't surprised. Really? No. Okay, good. Because I think a few people were like, what the fuck is this chick doing? Mm. <laughs> Got a big blue dildo, probably like this size, printed out a big trillionaire thing. Wait, do you use it? No, it's oh. Henny's. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> <Got Henny. laughs> Thanks, Hen, for the dildo. <laughs> <laughs> I missed her and I was like, girl, I need to Damn, come Trent over. Must, Trent must have a horse. <laughs> I said, I need to come over and use your dildo. She was like, okay. Like, no questions asked. It's just Elisa being Elisa. 
Um, so got like a big trillionaire thug thing printed out and sellotaped it around the dildo yeah. and then had like some trillionaire thug porn on my phone, pulled out this big dilly and then it cut to me like eating a sandwich with a trillionaire thug in it, doing the gardening with a trillionaire thug on it, opening packages, like just anything I could think of. And I was like, if this doesn't get me on the white list, I'm going to look like an idiot. But at least I can say that I've tried, yep. you know, because it was the only thing I knew how to do. Yep. Um, and then posted it to Instagram and within like half an hour, ads had commented on it, Nico had commented on it, like people were sharing it. I was like, okay, all right, cool. This is potentially going somewhere. Yep. And then I think it was 40, 48 hours later, Nico messaged me and was like, yep, check, check, you're in. And I was like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. fuck, it was the best day ever. Um. But like the the whole vibe in, in the Discord was pretty fucking cool, eh, bro? You know? Yeah. Back then, what was the Queen's chat sort of like? Because I know there's a Queen's one. Yeah, it was. It like everyone was real, real supportive. Yeah. Um, and I'd be lying if I said I was still jumping in there now because I've kind of yeah, I haven't been on there ages, yeah, bro. I've I've pulled right back. Yeah. Um, but back then it was pumping. Yeah. And I don't know if it's. You know, it was it was a new project and it had all of this hype. And We're then, all newbies, bro. Yeah. So it was, like, real exciting. Yeah, and everyone's learning and bouncing ideas off each other. Yeah. And then, you know, another project pops up. Yep. And so once people have minted their thugs, everywhere, you they're know, gone. Like, they're gone. Yeah, and they move on. And I guess that maybe that's just the nature of the NFT beast. So you, you, minted, a, you minted a few thugs? I minted one. You minted one? Yeah. Bro, you only minted one. I minted you one. You minted one, I bro. was meant to get bro, two. You minted one. I fucked up my gas one. prices. Oh, well, that was a good thing. Bro. Right, and guess yeah. what one it was? It was a gold thug ranked 12th. Yeah, so you got a gold thug, bro. Yep. How much did you sell that gold thug for, bro? 6th. 6 <laughs> Which translated to 27 grand New Zealand. 27 grand, bro. How much, how much, how much did you pay for it? 1200 1200 27 grand. What? Bro. What? Yeah. So strange. Yeah, I could I honestly, I so still can't believe it. Dick is, this, yeah. this bitch made fucking 27 grand. I'm a trillionaire thug dildo. Yeah, yeah. that's what's up. <laughs> well, yeah, it's still buzzy to think about. Yeah, bro. Just the fact that, like I was lying in bed and I missed, I slept, because I go to bed real early, yep. and I missed the reveal. Yep. So I got up the next morning, refreshed, and this gold one popped up. And I started, I, like, I, I popped champagne at 7 o'clock in the morning. I was like, cool, yeah. it's a gold one. And then Damn. I went on that rarity sniper. Yeah. And I was like, it's ranked 12th. Damn. And I had mates messaging me being like, what the fuck? And I was, yeah, I, I don't know what to do. Everyone was saying, hold it, hold it, yeah. hold it. Um, I think you put sold at the perfect time, bro. Same. And I don't want to discredit, you know, and be like, ah. But I think I got out at the perfect time. Yeah. And people were a little bit like, eh, why, like, you know, because if you've got something that rare, yep. the longer you hold it, potentially. Potentially. Yeah. It's all potential, eh? Like, all you don't potential. know. potential. It's yep. been like, could be life changing money. Like, 100%. And I was sitting there, and Ellery said to me, he was like, would you rather cash out now and take that 27, I think it was 27K, um, or, or risk losing all of that? Yeah. And I was like, nah, I can't. Like, at the yeah. stage that we're at, we are in life, yep. even I'd be happy with 27K, and if it got to 100K in the future, Yep. Take it as a loss. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. And learn from it. Yep. Yeah. You still have yours? Yeah, I still got mine. I, just, I, haven't, been, I haven't been too much involved in, 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 that, in that whole world. Like, I was just yeah. new to that and I was like, I got, got hyped on it. Yeah. Um, got some and then I started noticing everyone just jumping to the next one to the next one. I didn't want to do that. So, yeah. I just, I've just pulled back from that, that world and just focusing on, on myself and yeah. um, the other things I've got going in, on in my life. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but I still, I still um, own mine. Yeah. Um, and I just, I'm just going to keep them, bro. It's, yeah. not, it's not, nothing to me if I, if I lose that money, well, then I just learn from it. Yeah, 100%. And I've um, kept learning with the money that I made. I've reinvested a portion of it into other shares and, um, like, uh, party bears and some, some other project which I couldn't have afforded to invest in had it not been for selling the thug. Yeah. So, yeah, it works in roundabout ways. Yeah. And I'm still, still just trying to learn things because I'm definitely no expert. Yeah, no, never. Like no one, no one's an expert in anything, really. Yeah, and, and to just pe- to be able to admit that there's power and vulnerability because yep. there's so many people out there who will say, "Oh, like come across very egotistical." I know everything about this. I'm going to tell you exactly where to put your money, and you, you have to do this because I know everything. Yeah, and and people just don't. And if you can admit that you don't know any everything, there's so much power in that because you yeah, instantly you become, become relatable. Hundred percent. 
Magical. Yeah. Yeah. So when are you going to start this podcast, Lisa? Okay. So, well, I've got no excuses now. Mm. And I'll be really disappointed if it's not the fat pussy podcast. <laughs> I have all the equipment ready to go. So I'm going to, oh, first episode will be done this weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah. Record it and then, I don't know, maybe take me a few days to figure it all out and just put it out there. And if people want to follow you, how are they going? Uh, so Instagram, Elisa, E-L-I-S-A underscore Wilson. Um, and then my TikTok is Ali, E-L-L-Y. Ali's like the alter ego. Mm. Mm. It's the party girl. The party girl. With the fat pussy. <laughs> out of it. It's out of it. Or I don't know. Out how of it. We should have taken a shot every time we said fat pussy. <laughs> 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 then, we have, bro, then they would have. Then they would have. Really, then they would have. Then they would have really seen like. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. We were working on the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> out of it. <laughs> Uh, what about you? What's your vision for your podcast? Um, yeah, yeah, but I just like just talk to people and chop it up. Yeah. Um, try try and get people on who I feel like um, can help people through yeah. their story. Yeah. You know that's why I got you on because I, I I knew a, a bit about you and I and then you mentioned that you into you were looking to get into podcasting. Yeah. And I always try and uh, to encourage people if they're trying to cut step out of their comfort zone and mm-hmm. um, you know. Give them a platform. Yeah. Not that it's much, but... No, you're incredibly um, generous. Like, I just have to say that off the bat. You you don't owe me anything but the fact that, you know, Bez went out of his way to invite me in here to show me the podcast equipment and for you to take that time. Because I love it, bro, when I, yeah. someone tells me they want to do something. Like, when someone tells me they want to do something, I fucking love that. And I'm like, do it, bro. Yeah. Do it. How can I help you? But not see, not everyone's like that, right? Yeah. And New Zealand has that tall poppy syndrome where... You yeah, know, you don't want anyone to get a, more ahead than you. Yeah. Because God forbid that, and you're just not like that. So Everyone just gets fucking yeah. jealous, bro. You're so genuine. At, at so you just want to, like, bring, bring other people up. Like, I feel, it makes me feel good, you know? Like, yeah. P- p- trying to put other people down, I don't get, I don't get that mindset. Because you're living in your truth, I reckon. Yeah. And you're doing you, and you're doing everything that you can to tick your goals off, that there's not a, any part of you that wants to project Hate or ill thoughts on anyone else. I just remember, like when I when when I like had a shit job, bro, and I hated life. And um, now I do something I love every day. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I love doing this too. So yeah. Um, as soon as you mentioned, I was like, "Fuck you, let's." Um, I'll help you out. Oh, I'm so glad that you invited me on. It's honestly, I was so nervous. It's been a pleasure. Now you've been good. I think you know people kind of love love this, love to listen to it, and um, yeah. Fat as pussy in there. Fat as pussy. He's Z- side. Oh. He's fucking side. Out of it. 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 <laughs> Lisa Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. Chabez, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, honestly. It's, this has been so cool. <laughs>